hello and welcome to another out of spec podcast episode you join me with miko from chem power who is uh really on the technical side of things and that's what i wanted to dive into in this episode we've done plenty of episodes now with chem power explaining their strategy to enter the us a high level overview of how their hardware works we of course know their cold weather rated and tested and unbelievably reliable but i wanted to dig a bit deeper in this episode with nico to figure out uh what the heck is under the hood if you will so miko what is your exact role at chem power and again thank you for joining the show thank you, thank you. it's it's really nice uh, nice to join join to the, to your uh, podcast uh so i'm i'm uh, head of uh, rd uh, Chief Te Technology Officer in, in Kempower, and uh, I have been working already more than uh, five and a half years because I was first employee starting at, at the 2018 January. Oh, really? So you were like, from the beginning, this has been your project and your baby developing this whole system. Exactly, exactly. Amazing. And had you been driving electric back then? How did you get involved in building charging stations actually this this uh, i used to work work for a building company kempi before i was heading art in kempi and and uh, i had a responsibility also to to uh, for, uh, to develop business uh, new businesses so so uh, ev charging was one of my my research projects we were starting already uh, 10 years back. It was uh, 2012, 2013, when we did uh, our first uh, tests. Wow, super early on. And then, of course, ChemPower was born and sounds like you developed this system. And is the system that's coming to the U.S. and that we primarily see in Europe, is that a similar approach to DC fast charging to what you guys were working on in 2014, 2015 when you started at ChemPower? Yeah, that's true. It is it is uh, similar. Uh, we were building a product roadmap, and and uh, our first product roadmap was actually quite equal to to product offering that we today have. So so we have been we have been planning planning and designing systems so that that uh, already from the beginning that that we are using satellites and 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 uh, dynamic power sharing. Right. And that is the real key, um, you know, to I think chem power system is you can put in a centralized power source pretty much at, you know, the center of your site or wherever you want it to go. And then you can feed a whole bunch of satellites that can charge cars simultaneous simultaneously off of that one charging power unit. And uh, what it allows for is for you to maximize your grid connection um, by sort of playing on the charging curves of the cars, because when a car is plugged into, let's say, an all-in-one unit, uh, you need to have that all-in-one unit up to 350, 360 kilowatts to give you full power. But if you plug a uh, you know, Chevrolet Bolt into that 360 kilowatt charger, then you have all that unused conversion power that's just going to waste. In your system, how important was it when you were engineering this that you had AC to DC rectifying uh, you know, power that was being used most of the time it is it is really important because uh, uh when we analyzed those those cars uh back five years ago we we recognized that that, that, that those uh, those charging curves are declining a lot so so uh, you are not able to build a efficient uh, charger if you if you just spread and configure uh, charger at starting point so we decided that that, that we, we should be flexible and and once uh, vehicle is not requiring any more so so high by high power uh, we can we can then drop uh, power sources and uh, um, power modules and and give it to, give those to other vehicles so on a more technical level level i think our audience understands a lot of this so far um, your DC power modules really are the backbone of your system. They're the ones doing the heavy lifting, doing the conversion power and actually charging the cars. And this is done off board uh, in a centralized unit, if you will. And then there's going to be a DC 
power to the actual dispensers. Um, what is going on in that power module? Is that your design? Are you buying that in from a supplier? How do you get the reliability that ChemPower has? Uh, we, we get rel reliability by, by designing those by ourselves and, and, and uh, using, using good uh, uh, suppliers for, for components. So those are, those are, those are uh, designed by, by us. And what is different about your design compared to mass market? Can you share some, some nitty gritty <laughs> secrets, maybe some interesting things that are going on that, that you think lead to higher reliability? Because if I'm not mistaken, they, they do have air cooling that flow through the power module. Um, but we've seen this trend to this closed system now where everything would be liquid cooled with a radiator. What was the decision to go air cooling and how were you able to make that so reliable? Uh, we have our roots in in welding, so so our our sister company has been uh, developing welding welding power supplies already uh, almost eighty years. So those those power power sources they are used in in offshore shipyards and oil rigs uh, where where water comes uh, salt water comes comes straight to the uh, machine. So. Uh, uh, you will get water and condensed water into the power source, but you just need to build the electronics so that that it can survive. It can survive water and it can survive conductive dust. Interesting. So really, I mean, we've seen a lot of failures from ambient air transfer going into these power modules, but ChemPower it hasn't really been affected. Now, that's not to say all the power modules work all the time, but it, you have such mm. high reliability with this design. Uh, and it really comes down to, it sounds like, that extreme build quality on the electronics portion to handle all of that. Is that, am I getting that right? Yeah, that's 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 absolutely right. And and uh, within one cabinet, uh, uh, we have uh, four power modules. And each power modules, we have uh, two power sources. So all together within one cabinet, we 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 will we have uh, eight power sources. So that's our uh, step. So those twenty five kilowatt uh, power sources, we are then directing to different dispensers. Right. So that is interesting. So let's say, what is the, what is the largest power cabinet or power system that you can have at one site? Is it up to eight dispensers and 600 kilowatts or what is the maximums for this? Yeah, it, it is, it is eight, eight dispensers uh, and, and 600 kilowatts. Uh, and, uh, and this or, or, already, this, this limitation is uh, kind of uh, virtual. Uh, but I mean, I mean that uh, that uh, uh, there is no technical issues why we cannot connect uh, four cabinets together. Uh, biggest uh, challenges are coming from logistic. Mm. And you mean logistics in terms of actually getting the power modules or hooking it up, or what? Uh, what would uh, be the limitation? Ho hooking hooking four 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 cabinets together uh, to the to the uh, truck and so. Right. Sure. Okay. That could be quite a complicated wiring situation. That makes sense. So when you're out in the public right now and you charge on a chem power unit, can you explain to us roughly how the power is getting to the car? It's coming obviously from the grid into your cabinet, but then what happens after the AC DC rectification? What, how do you choose what modules to spin up? How do you choose what cars get what power? What's the general, uh, you know, sort of overview of running a charging station what does that process look like well, when car comes to our, our charging station uh, it tells who it is uh, we we know we, we have our own uh, uh, car identification system so so we then then we know uh, how, how it's going to behave in this kind of environment and and uh, always in charging it goes so that that, that uh, Car is uh, master and we are slave. So car is, car is uh, telling us uh, what what is the uh, battery voltage. If it's uh, if it's uh, eight hundred, we are we are connecting power sources ser first serial and then parallel. If it's four hundred, then we are just uh, connecting power sources parallel. 
and and uh, we are then uh, uh, providing as many uh, power sources as car requires. So you're actually doing a reconfiguration of the charger virtually to decide whether or not you're going to go into series to double the voltage output of your actual chargers. Does this take some extra time during the handshake process for the charger to reconfigure? I know some units do. Um, they might take an extra 10 or 15 seconds to reconfigure. What does the process on ChemPower look like? Yeah, of course it takes some time, but but it, it's some just a couple of seconds. Uh, it's okay. it's not uh, not causing any 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 extra time for charging. And is this an actual contactor that's changing the power flow, or is it a software change, or how does that work internally? It is it is it is a contactor and relay. Okay, so it's a physical wiring change on the unit. Yes. And it's relatively new that you guys are supporting uh, up to a thousand volt charging, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's true. Because uh, because uh, uh, if we go two years back, there were only four hundred volt uh, cars. Now now there is more and more eight hundred volt cars, and and uh, that's that's the reason why we did this change. Yeah, it seems to make sense. And I think as far as I understand it, everything in the U.S. will be eight hundred volt or higher capable in terms of charging equipment. I don't think we're going to have any of the 400 volt or 500 volt capped charge chargers here. Um, yeah, that's true. So it is a really cool system with chem power because uh, there's so many integration possibilities. And in the next podcast, we're actually going to talk a little bit about your charge eye software and how this controls everything on the back end. but just wanted to finish up on the hardware topic really quick, the real deep engineering of this stuff. Um, ChemPower uses a modular, uh, you know, sort of AC to DC rectifier module that you can put in, as far as I understand it, in any configuration in this cabinet that you want. You basically can say, I want a 100 kilowatt cabinet, 200 kilowatt cabinet, 300 kilowatt cabinet, and you can spec the size of your site. You can spec the number of dispensers to what you're looking for. But it would seem to me that when you plug in a car, and you're always spinning up the first uh, AC to DC rectifier, the first module, and then the second module comes online, um, that you're going to wear those components out faster than the rest that might be reserved for higher power. Is there some technology to reduce the stress on that you know, first module that spins up every time? Uh, of course, we are not always starting from the same module, uh, so we are counting uh, uh, how many how many uh, hours we have been running each module, and and we are taking always the, uh, this one that is uh, that is least used. Oh, interesting. So you're actually changing the configuration of the charger to reduce the load, or I should say, to spread the load across all of the uh, modules, so you don't have one unit that fails first. Exactly, exactly. And uh, if, if you have a three cabinet system, uh, you normally get get the modules from each and every cabinet so oh. that we are we are we are not we are not uh, uh, warming one cabinet and uh, rest are gold. Right, because I was talking to some folks who make modules recently and they said the heat cycles is what kills it more than anything. Mm, that's true. That's true. Yeah. It is all, always, always uh, when speaking about inverters and converters. Yeah. So um, a couple of last questions for you. In terms of the North American market, ChemPower has already announced support of the uh, North American charging standard connector. And I know it's very early days uh, because no one makes a cable that you can just go and buy right now, <laughs> uh, except for Tesla. And so have you done any testing with NAX yet? What do you think the implementation will look like? It seems to me that it's going to speak the same ISO 1511-8-2 language that CCS communicates on. Is it going to be as simple as a cable swap or are there going to be some hardcore changes needed for this new cable? We have done our uh, first tests uh, with NAX, uh, NAX uh, plugs and, and uh, 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 specification is not yet ready. Uh, we haven't went through all all all, all cases, and and uh, availability of cable is is one of those uh, big questions, especially when when going to the liquid cooled uh, cables. 
Yes, of course, because you guys are delivering very high current with liquid cooling as an option. And this could be a very, um, you know, there's just no cable you can buy with liquid cooling right now. You can buy air cooled ones, but, uh, you know, it's still very early days here. But at least from what you're finding, are you thinking this might be a pretty simple switch out in the field where someone could just swap a cable from CCS to NAX? Or will they have to order a charging setup from you from the factory with NAX? Uh, in the end, it, it will be so that, that it is, uh, uh, for our customers, it will be just easy swap. And, mm -hmm. and they can decide if they take a CCS1 or, or, or NAX. Um, we, are, we are developing all this uh, vehicle communication by ourselves. So, so protocol changes are, are easy to implement. Right, because you have, and we'll talk about it with the charge eye. You have software that you can deploy. It's really next level stuff. So I can't wait to get into that. Um, in your impression, the final thing on this this podcast here is there anything that you typically show when you're demonstrating your ChemPower technology that's different or unique compared to other uh, competitors in the space? Uh, we have many things that uh, that are unique. Unique. Uh, uh, our design philosophy uh, starts from from practical everyday things uh, that uh, we are we are trying to do uh, things easier for for end users because uh, because charging is too much mystified and and uh, charges are too complex to use. We we need to we need to improve those and and. Uh, so that that uh, that uh, users can survive great well well thank you mika for taking the time and sharing a little bit more about chem power for those of you who are curious about the software side and integrating all of this i'm super excited for that stay tuned for the next episode on the out of spec podcast because miko and i are going to dig into what the charge i software is capable of so thanks for joining miko and we'll see you on the next episode thank you Kyle. Thank <laughs> you.